So indeed, we are going to talk about code reviews and especially how to have Zen code reviews uh, without having uh, any conflicts within the team. So first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Xavier Goucher. I am an Android architect at Deezer. I am also the Mr. Tools of the team, uh, CI admin and unit test advocate. Um, and you can find me on all the social networks, as usual, with my handle, Xgouché. Um, so first of all, let's have a show of hand in here. Who uh, uses code review daily? Good, good. Uh, who used to use code review and stopped? No, ah. I'm interested to talk to you later. Um, so to give you a, a bit of uh, background, uh, at Deezer we have uh, 18 Android developers, uh, all working on three uh, main repositories and a dozen of non-main repositories. And everyone has varied uh, skills and experience, <clears throat> which is uh, a lot to deal with. So first of all, let's come back to the different purposes of code reviews. Um, the first one is very uh, straightforward, is to find defects early. Uh, that is, you can find uh, logic fallacies or typos, spelling, um, edge cases, and uh, poten potential te technical debt uh, early by having your code reviewed by someone else. Uh, the idea is that two pair of eyes uh, is better than one. Uh, but it's, it's the main uh, thing you think about when you, when you think about code reviews, but it's not the only purpose. Uh, for instance, you can uh, harmonize the code base. When you have code reviews, you can make sure that the code style, uh, naming conventions, uh, architecture, and libraries uh, are all uh, the same uh, throughout the whole code base. Uh, Especially when you have new uh, new developers who have their own way of writing things, having a code review uh, is, a, is a nice way to uh, make sure that everyone writes uh, code the same way. Uh, it's also uh, very interesting to generate discussions uh, around the choices that are made, uh, especially the choices in algorithm or data structure, um, architectural libraries. And it also generates discussion around the features because uh, if you have code reviews, you can learn about a feature and how the feature works uh, long before it's actually in production. And that means that you can think about it beforehand. Um, uh, more often than not, uh, I learn about new features during code reviews and start asking questions like, why is it implemented that way? Why uh, is the, the, the feature, um, uh, how way that does a feature works like this, uh, because sometimes in some cases it doesn't make sense from a user point of view. So you can have more thoughts of that from different people on the, on the way the feature works uh, if you have the, the code review beforehand. It's all nice to generate discussion about best practices because sometimes when you have an issue or a problem to solve, there are more than one way to solve it. And code review is a good way to discuss an argument on which is the best practice. It's very nice also to do some team building, especially if you have a large team, uh, because uh, it generates cohesion and trust. Because the more you read someone else's code, the more you can trust that they're good at their job, or not. Uh, and it lowers the LinkedIn factor. So what I call the LinkedIn factor, it's also known as the burst factor. Basically, it's how much uh, uh, in uh, trouble you would be if someone in the team was hit by a bus. So I choose to call it the LinkedIn factor because it's less morbid. It's just someone being hired by someone else. Uh, so if, if you lose one member of your, of your team, from a bus or from a, a, a competing company, how much in trouble would you be? Uh, and code reviews help you make sure that everyone in the team knows about every piece of code in the application, especially if you have a large part, a large application. Uh, then uh, it also can serve as a, uh, asynchron asynchronous pair programming. For instance, if you have a company with people uh, in uh, different countries and different time zones, uh, you can have real-time pair programming, or it's very difficult. And code review is a nice way to have pair programming uh, asynchronously. It's also very good to share knowledge, and we had the, the amazing uh, uh, keynote this morning about sharing your knowledge. 
<coughs> and uh, having code reviews uh, help you onboard junior and new developers. Uh, because when you first get into a team, if you can read the code that the authors write, you, you start to familiarize yourself with the whole code base and not just the first few tasks that you're given. And also, it starts with the idea that everyone has something to teach and everyone has something to learn. And even a junior developer can have something to teach to a senior developer. Um, there are some downsides of code reviews, or at least some people think there are. Uh, the first one being that uh, code review means that you have more time spent per ticket, and so less time spent delivering feature. And especially you have product managers that say that we should deliver more feature faster. Uh, but the thing is that the time you spend on code review is time you won't be spending uh, fixing bugs uh, three weeks later. And the time that you spend fixing a bug three weeks after it's been merged uh, is actually higher than fixing, fixing, fixing it uh, right away when it's found in code review because when you come back to it three months or three weeks later, you're going to have to go back to the mental state you were in when you developed the feature. You're going to have to dig and say, oh, how does it work uh, again? Oh, like this. So it's, it's harder to fix a bug later because you don't have it in your uh, buffer, I guess. Um, also, it can lead to senior developer frustration, uh, especially if you have the senior developer always saying the same, uh, pointing to the same rookie mistakes and uh, pointing, uh, say, saying that the naming is bad or the, the, it doesn't follow the guidelines. And usually, if you have this kind of problem, it it usually means that uh, you lack some documentation or the documentation is too hard to find. So these are downsides, but usually it hides uh, other problems. So now what? What are the different kinds of uh, code reviews? Uh, the first one that I call automatic code review, code review is fairly easy. It's everything that can be done automatically by a computer. So it's static analysis. So the Android lens, uh, find bugs, check style, and PMD. If you don't already know about them, please take a look because they are very, very useful to uh, find potential issues in your code. And the same goes for find bugs, check style, and PMD. PMD works on Java, detect, and click. Cl it's not possible to read this word, but Catalint uh, works on Kotlin. Uh, so it's very, very useful because it can point at uh, some potential mistakes in your code. Uh, like uh, possible null pointer exceptions or possible uh, concurrency issues. And also I, uh, I put the tests in the same category because the tests run without having uh, uh, anyone to do uh, some work. It, you can make it run automatically on every PR. Then you have the pre-commit uh, code reviews. So pre-commit code review, the, 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 the basic idea is that uh, you need to have someone review your code and approve your code before the code can actually be merged on uh, the branch you're developing in. So the pros are that the quality is ensured before merging. So basically your code is not on any branch. It still lives only in a PR as long as no one uh, approved it. And it means that all the code must be reviewed. But the cons is that you have a very high productivity impact because when you start working on a PR, you submit it and then you have to wait for someone else to read it and approve it. And it can also lead to the back and, fo back and forth hell, um, which is basically uh, you have a, uh, a first uh, developer reviewing your code and reject it, rejecting it and saying, yes, you need to change this, this part. So you change it, you update your PR, and then someone else comes in and say, oh, you also need to change this. So you update it, submit again your PR, and a third developer comes in, and basically it's, it's hell. So it happens, but um, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of the downsides of the pre-commit uh, way. The post-commit way is uh, different. It's basically you can merge your PR as soon as the tests are green. And uh, then you just need to uh, allocate yourself some time to come back and review uh, already merged code. So the pro is that, of course, you can have a very uh, fast, continuous development. And you limit the Git conflicts because you don't have a PR waiting days or even weeks sometimes and having to be rebased. And uh, you don't have to handle the Git conflicts. 
Uh, the cons is that you can uh, ship a, a bug into production uh, because the post commit, uh, if you don't have a time frame uh, to, uh, to do the, the, the commit, uh, the bug can go into production and then you find it when it's too late. And uh, if you find it too late, the resolution can be non-trivial. Uh, I had this issue once where uh, a change was made uh, while I was in holidays and when I came back, uh, it was already merged uh, and uh, already in production. And basically, it, uh, it, it had set up uh, the, the tables in the, data, in, uh, in the data, uh, database uh, in such a way that we couldn't change it back. And, uh, and so I didn't have my say in it. So very frustrating. <clears throat> You can also make code reviews optional, uh, if you have a, especially if you have a large team. So you can make it optional based on the commit author. So for instance, if someone is uh, in the company for less than six months or if it's a junior developer, you want to review everything. Or you can make it uh, optional by commit length. So if, it's, uh, co if the commit changes only uh, three lines, you don't need a code review. And if it's a uh, larger uh, commit, you want code reviews. Uh, you can make uh, optional by uh, files modified. For instance, uh, say every time someone touches the build.gradle file or the manifest or the main activities or the main services or content providers, you want, to be, uh, you want it to be reviewed. And you can also say, well, we're going to have random checks, so every N PR needs to be reviewed. Or you can have other rules, uh, anything goes. Then you can have pair reviews with another developer. So basically the idea is that uh, you're gonna have, uh, you're gonna sit uh, together and look at the PR uh, in pair, uh, which uh, helps you provide a single feedback. So uh, you can argue between yourself and discuss before submitting the, the review. It also uh, helps to compare different viewpoints beforehand, before submitting the review. And it can also tone down uh, the negative feedbacks. Uh, from experience, when you're alone behind your, your keyboard, you tend to be, um, you, you tend to write uh, harder comments than when you're two uh, writing uh, this, uh, together. Going a bit further, you can have also, also uh, code review meetings uh, with the author of the, the, the commit. So it's usually three to seven attendees, uh, and it's only for non-trivial reviews. So don't do that if it's just a one line to add a if not nil. Um, and that way it can be uh, used to mentor the author, especially, especially if it's a junior developer. And you can get an in-depth view. And what's nice with this is that the author of the commit can guide you through um, through the PR in, in, its, in his, own, his or her own order. Uh, because when you see the PR in uh, GitHub or Garrett or whatever tool you're using, uh, you see the files uh, sorted al alphabetically and not necessarily in uh, the relevant order to understand the review. It's also nice to discuss alternatives because it's live talk and not back and forth with comments. And you can give immediate feedback on uh, the issue. So, I think, yeah. so how to do and how not to do code review. So that's the most important part because uh, I've seen bad ways to do code reviews. The first thing to do is to write reviewable code. The main thing being to uh, keep the commits short. Uh, if you don't already know git add uh, p, please take a look at it. Uh, the basic idea of this is that instead of adding the whole file and the, all the modifications in the single file, you can just select which lines, which modifications you want to add from a file. So basically you can have a file completely modified and, only, and split it into three or four commits uh, to make the commits short. Uh, comment the code, of course, because if you have something that's not trivial uh, to read, uh, it's going to generate questions in the code review and it's going to generate a back and forth hell. <clears throat> Use a proper commit message, of course. Just don't say fix bug. Uh, you have a lot of, uh, of uh, blog posts about how to write a good uh, commit message. 
And uh, internally, what we do is we create, we also add a CR brief uh, for non-trivial commits. So basically, CR brief is code review brief that we we write inside the code review or inside the PR uh, description, and it's. Uh, a guide on how to read the code review. So basically, it's like, um, uh, for instance, if you have uh, a lot of files where you just renamed uh, a class, you are, you're going to have the modification in a lot of files, and most of them are not really interesting to read. So you can have a CR brief say, OK, I mostly changed this file, so just look at, uh, at this class uh, and this method in this class, and every, uh, everywhere else, it's just renaming something. Or you can say, if you want to understand the code review, just look at first this, uh, this class or this POJO, uh, and then you'd understand uh, how it's used uh, everywhere else. <clears throat> also, if you have a ticket number, be it in JIRA or GitHub issue, uh, you uh, uh, link to it from within your uh, commit message or the pull request because uh, it's going to give context about the modification you made and it's going to make the code review much more easier to, to do. Before submitting your code, review your own code. So uh, that's something that I try to do every time I do a PR. It's uh, switching my hat from the developer to the reviewer and I do my own code review before submitting it to others. That way you can find easy to spot issues such as typos, commented codes, or duplicates or possible refactorings. Because taking the reviewer hat makes you take a step back uh, from your code, okay, also copy paste errors. So you take a step back on your code and you take a look at it uh, from a different point of view. And you're going to see all the small mistakes that people are going to say, oh, uh, you need to, uh, this is uh, spelled with two L's, or you commented this line of code, just remove it, or why did you create this field? It's not used anywhere in the class. Uh, you can find those when you do your own code reviews. Then you have commenting on issues. This is a very bad example. So Linus, it's, uh, Linus Torvald uh, is known for doing this kind of comments. Uh, he, is, uh, he has a reputation. Um, well, so this is something you should not do at all. Even if you are the boss of the, of the company, you do not do this. Um, so basically, the first thing is when you want to pinpoint an issue, first be precise. What exactly is the problem? You don't say this code is bad, this is wrong, you're going to have bugs with this. You're going to say this line could cause a memory leak. Say exactly what the problem is. And don't stop there. You need to argument. Why is it a problem? You don't say ob obviously, yeah, everyone can see that this is wrong. No, just say why this is a problem. Here, the activity reference. Oh, oops. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my computer is on. It's a laptop. It works. So ow, oh, it's coming back. It's coming back.
Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Test, test. Check, check. Check, check. Ah, test. <clears throat> ah, great. So. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so I, I, I learned not to make joke about Linus Torvald. Um, <clears throat> Anyway, uh, so <laughs> you need to argument why this is a problem. So for instance, you need to say here the activity reference is retained when you do this or that. Um, don't stop there. If you pinpoint a problem and you know where the problem comes from, help fix the problem. You can say, okay, here if you want, you can use a weak reference and it would solve your issue. Uh, whenever you pinpoint to an issue, that you, you, you found as an issue, usually you know how to not do the, the issue, how, how to not do the bad code. Uh, also, you need to define the criticity uh, because almost every uh, code that you're going to see is imperfect, but not every imperfection needs to be solved right now. So you're going to say, okay, it's not critical, you can fix it later, but before the, re the release candidate next week. That way, the PR can still be merged, but the author can have uh, a new ticket or a post-it or a GitHub issue or whatever to say, yes, I need to fix this uh, fast. Um, so here are, here are a few examples of how you could phrase some, uh, uh, some comments. So for instance, you can say, oh, the name of this variable is ambiguous. You could rename it as. This is actually a very good example because we all know that naming things when you develop is very hard. It's like 90% of your time is finding the right name for it. So usually when you, when you submit a PR, you have uh, something that's named this data or this manager, and, and it doesn't exactly describe what it does. And it's very easy to say, yeah, the name of this is, not, is wrong. But if you just say the name is wrong and you don't have something better to offer, just don't say anything at all. Or if you want to, if you don't like the, the, the name, just find another name that's better for it. Uh, I don't think this method should be in this class because it's outside of the class's responsibility. So here you see, you, you give your opinion and you give your, the reason for that. Here it's one of the solid principles that says uh, you have a single responsibility, responsibility principle. Or finally, my favorite one, because I use it like once a week. This rule has many edge cases. You should add more unit tests. You never have enough unit tests. <laughs> voting down. So voting down, depending on the tool you, do, you use, it's voting down or it's reject the PR or it's something else. But basically, uh, voting down is the author needs to work again on the code before it can be merged. Avoid blocking commits unnecessarily. Every time you block a commit, first you engage in the back and forth hell and it's going to lead to frustration, but also it's going to mean that uh, the commit is going to wait longer before being merged and you're going to have some uh, git conflicts at some point. Always make the reasons clear why you're voting down. So when you have a large commit, you made a, a, a dozen comments uh, and only one of them is actually mandatory uh, to be fixed uh, before it can be merged, say which one. Uh, because otherwise the, the author can spend a lot of time fixing everything and some of those were not necessary. Make a full review. So I had some, uh, some colleagues that uh, when they did a, a code review, they stopped at the first issue they found. So they found an issue that say, oh, this is bad, you should, you should change it and do something uh, this instead. And they stop right there. And you know there are eight other files that have not been read yet, but it stops there and says so you, you need to change that, so he rejects the code review. And so you go back to your code, you update it, and you push it again. And the same developer comes back and says, oh yeah, great, you changed this. It goes to the next file and finds something else that you need to change. And it does that, and you can have three or four back and forth because they stop at the first uh, issue they find. Do a full review because if you stop at the first issue, you're going to lose everyone's time finding the other issues in the, in the code review. 
And if an issue has already been raised, don't come and just say plus one, right? This isn't Facebook, uh, so you don't have to, it's, it's very uh, hard to have someone say, uh, uh, pointing the, uh, the finger at uh, uh, a rookie mistake that you made because you were tired or you may just made a mistake and you have like 25 plus ones on this and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bad, okay. So it's very bad for the, the ego of developers to have this. Receiving critique, so about that, 